London Town has hosted a poker game with big money on the line. Behind the barbed wire and high fences, famous faces in sport have made the trip to the East End and taken to the table in pursuit of the Sports Stars Challenge title. Daddy's home. Larry, Thank congratulations. You Thank you. Hot seat for hot sauce. Bully. Oh my God. First a chance, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. That wasn't a bluff. That was the best. Our heat winners are all back in the den for the final, and this is where the big cash starts coming. Welcome to the final table of the Party Poker Sports Stars Challenge 4. A great mix of famous sporting stars and internet qualifiers have made it through their heats, pocketing 7,000 pounds in the process. Only one can be crowned Sports Star Challenge Champion and take that 20,000 pound first prize. Let's open the doors to the poker den. A French golfer with two European Tour victories, he's most famous for coming second in the British Open Championship. This is Jean Van de Velde. This Northern Irish former boxer held the flyweight world title for three years. He's regarded as one of the most successful British boxers in history, Davy Boy McCauley. This online qualifier has two years poker experience. Qualifying here is his biggest achievement, London's Jason Brennan. He's represented two different countries in two different disciplines, playing rugby league for New Zealand and union for England, currently playing for Leeds, it's Henry Paul. He's a former German international with 68 caps to his name. He played most of his career with Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich, with whom he won the European Championship, Thomas Helmer. This online qualifier has beaten over 8,000 people just to get here. It's Blackpool's Paresh Patel. Rounding off our final table with a deep finish in the 2006 WSOP main event from Torquay, Scott O'Reilly. They've all proven themselves among their peers, but now it's time to find out who is the ultimate champion. Cards in the air for the final table. This is where a champion is made the final table. Each of these guys, sports stars, legend, and qualifiers alike, has won through his heat in six different disciplines. And some big names on the table. The green chips worth $25 each. The blue chips worth 50 bucks. The red chips worth 100. Each player starting with $2,000 in chips. Um, there's 14,000 in play on the table. But that doesn't exactly reflect the prize money up for grabs here, Nick, which is pretty sturdy. Um, they all, of course, have each been guaranteed 7,000 um, pounds. And there's a further 35,000 pounds up for grabs uh, on this final table. Top three spots. A nice little day's work for one of these guys. So good luck to them all. Pass. Pass. Who's the favorite for you here? Pass. I'm going to look towards the professional players, Pass. the full-time players. And uh, Scott O'Reilly impressed me in his heat. So. I know Scott quite well. He's got a hell of a game. He's played under big pressure before. So at this stage, I might make him my favorite, Jesse. His first pot, blind on blind, Von Die Veld. Um, and he will, I think, like his position on the table. As you said, O'Reilly to his right. On his left, Dave McCauley, who though he played very well. Um, Cole. All right. Cole was uh, was playing a pretty straight game. And, you know, in this early stage, I think Van de Velde is going to be able to push him off some pots. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Van de Velde will be prone to, uh, Check. Check. I wouldn't say bluff, but he's aggressive. Check. So I fancy him winning the blind walls between him and Dave. But let's see. Macaulay was drawing very thin, only a four. They both got <coughs> the queen. The eights are good. And, I mean, 
real question here as to whether or not Vondervelde cool. is betting for value or was making perhaps a blocking bet. He's making a kind of value bet. He's not bluffing. He knows he's got a fairly decent hand. It was uh, a good hand on the flop. And so, you know, I don't mind his bet there. And he got paid by the four, so well played Jean van der Velde. He sure did. Just $75 there. Didn't want to have to call for more, did he? And thought maybe he'd get called by fours, which he did. Absolutely. Look at that. Is that a birdie? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight drive. A good approach oh and holding the putt, Von de Velde starts out uh, one under and chip leader. There was really different characteristics of each heat in each of the six different sporting fields. Um, for me, the, the golfing heat uh, was, was fantastic in its sort of uh, in his camaraderie, as was the rugby heat. Uh, these guys had a lot of fun, and <laughs> Henry Paul actually nice. destroyed them. Um, and now, he had some big nice. hands, but he was never nice. threatened. Uh, <coughs> very, very dominating. Nice. Nice. Cool. Cool. The boxing heat, of course, might have been the hardest work. Macaulay, what a bruising heads up he had to go through against Sosnowski. He was the last guy in the British boxing to fight for 15 rounds it, he lasted 13 rounds and uh, he gotcha. definitely went the full distance <laughs> in that last heat uh, that's a great it, stat it yeah. was pretty grueling actually and uh this young jason brennan from north london he has uh he's been the personality uh sort of of this tournament uh you know he really was up for his heat against all these darts uh heroes uh, he took Phil Taylor down, heads up, and I know he's really 75. been up for this 75. final. Um, and you can see right away, he's a guy who he showed this in his in his heat, didn't he, Nick? Uh, if he senses weakness, he will make the bluff and sometimes two barrels deep. I tell you what, if someone checks Check. to him, it's not a bad Check. play just to bet. I mean, he's got no, no real hand. Check. But it's a good check behind. He knows the board hasn't really changed, so... It's hard really to get okay. that second barrel through. Check. So that was, that was he would have been willing to make that second barrel on some turns. You think that's a good idea? Some turns, you know, the overcards to the 10, two, two, overcards five. to a six. Well, he's having another go at it here and he's made a nice bet size here. 225 into 250. This is kind of the bet size he's, he's going to need to make to make Davy Boy McCauley fold a yeah. three. Cool. Cool. Uh, it's a very curious call from Macaulay. He can really only beat a bluff, but you know what? He's up against a bluff. What do you think? Well played, Davey. Read the situation well and uh, made a good call on the river there. Well played. <laughs> when all these guys sat down in their heats, they didn't have much information on the other players. Now, a lot of them have seen each other play. Uh, they've been maybe watching the heats from the green room. Uh, who's the tightest player at the table? Who's the scariest? Raised to 150 total. Well, right, we'll talk about scariest. Bondeveld may have a bit of information on uh, Scott O'Reilly, doesn't want to re-raise here. I mean, it's re-raising will be a very aggressive play. Yeah, I mean, he's just calling with ace-jack. <laughs> Macaulay's calling with ace-ten. Are you fine with both of those? Yes. Yeah, it's fine. He's going to make a big pot. And you know that Scott O'Reilly, he, he thinks a lot like you do. He's a pro. Um, is he betting a lot of flops he misses here? What would you be? Not out of position. Uh, I'm not going to bet lots of flops out of position. And if he does know something about these guys, they don't fold very often. I mean, th this is an interesting board. One could argue a continuation bet would be in order. But in multi-way pots, people have things more often than they don't. Yeah, it looks like O'Reilly is going for the check and fold or check and free card. And Macaulay is a nice looking hand that's been checked to him. He's got the nut flush draw. And he's checked it behind, which is interesting. He didn't decide it. I think if he bet there, the king queen would fold and the ace jack would fold. But now he's let Van der Velde catch up. So <laughs> this is interesting. They've all checked it around. I wonder what Scott made of that. But he realizes the board's very coordinated and he doesn't want to try and win. He's out of position, Jesse, you see, so it's much more difficult for him to win the pot. He also, 
you know, if I'm trying to get inside Coin. Scott's head, oh. he recognizes the value of the chips in his stack, doesn't he? Which is more important for a guy like him. I mean, if you're in a cash game, you, you might be more liberal with your stack and uh, contemplate things like check raising this turn with two overs and a gut shot and fancy plays like that. But in a situation where you only start with 2,000 chips, you've got to be very, very cautious what you do. McCauley's got tons of outs, a plethora, and he hit everything. He hit the World's Fair. 350. 350. I'm gonna see that. Yeah, I mean, Von de Velde can think about it, think about it. At the end of the day, he wants to see. What do you have? What do you have? It doesn't matter. You have that. <laughs> <laughs> you see mine, but I can't see yours, eh? That's not good. You want have that. <laughs> I'd like to know what you have. Back in the rough again. If I win, just make sure that you run to me and pinch me very hard because I won't believe it. But uh, no, no, let's, uh, let's, let's not uh, make any plans here. Let's, let's just play, let's have fun. And if I win, well, beginner's luck. That's all I can say. I mean, I'm going to take it as a full bonus. I'm here, I don't know how. And, uh, and I'm going to try to play a few good hands and, and work my way around. Macaulay up to over 3,000. <laughs> it is a funny part of poker, isn't it? There's a there's a wide line between what you're entitled to do and what some people consider you should do. But you know, Macaulay thinks, and rightly so, I'm playing for big money here. Uh, I want to know what the guy on my right's up to. Absolutely. Information is good. It's just a bit of etiquette, really. You've just taken chips off a guy in a pot. Uh, Pass. Maybe asking to see his mock hands is Pass. pushing it a bit far. I don't personally Pass. do it. Pass. You know, if you're on the internet, you're seeing them every time, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, you just click a button and it's there for you, which is the benefit of playing online. But, but live is a bit different. Pass. Limp in here for Jason Brennan. How do you think he's going to handle the pressure of his first big TV Pass. final? He seems to be handling it quite well. He didn't mind bluffing. He's going to be in a bit of Please. trouble here, though. 200 more. And Paresh Patel has uh, made this a man size raise. I don't mind this size of raise. He's out of position. He's got aces. He's trying to get some money in the pot. And this is exactly what he wants. You see, aces don't come around that often, Jesse. If he makes it any more, if he makes it like 300, 400, people get very scared with aces. He just loses his oh. customer. So he makes it a size where he's going to be able to build a big pot if he hits, and yet... Uh, keep the guy in at the same time. He doesn't right. want to build too big a pot and, and blast the guy away. Aces don't come around very often. Oh no. I was gonna say, Jason's in trouble. The ace actually might save him. Okay. And oh! He's, and he's gonna check it. So, I see a lot of people do this with top set. He's now representing a different part of his range. Pocket tens, pocket queens, pocket kings. He's basically saying, that ace is no good for me, I'm gonna check. Be interesting to see what Jason does now. And, I mean, because Jason's in position, he can bet now, and if he gets called, check the turn and reevaluate on the river. Is that what you think's in his mind? Yeah. I mean, you've got to look at it. I mean, I wouldn't raise here. I know this. Raised to 400. Well, he's kind of given the game up a bit here. Cool. By a min check raise. Well, uh, what you're saying is that part of the range he was representing has now been shot, hasn't it? Well, yeah, he wouldn't ever do that with two queens on this kind of board, so... He's now representing a very strong hand. And the check raise was so small, it was almost like, please come with me. But that might slow things down a bit, actually. This pot's big. This pot's $1,300. Um, and he's gone red here. Um, this feels like the kind of bet. Now, he doesn't know what Jason. Oh my oh, no. gosh. Oh, cool. Cool. This is in the box. I had you figured for something else. Good play, my friend. I had you figured for something else. We should not talk before this game, I'll tell you that much. Brennan does have outs, yeah. but there ain't a lot of them. It has to be, does it have to be the queen? It has to be the queen. Um, and what was the key for here, for Parrish? I thought that bet on the turn looked, From the I thought it looked really dangerous against uh, Jason's range. You know, he min check raised the flop, showed a lot of strength and bet out on the oh, turn. Oh, that. wow, that's you, so I, sick. I, I was blessed before I came on here. 
That is absolutely outrageous, Jesse. Look at that card on the river. Paresh must feel. I can hardly believe it. His stomach's in his throat. He's. What a draw out! Brennan says, Did I tell you I was blessed? I mean, did Paresh play that absolutely perfect to get the money in or what? He got most of the money in on the turn as a 91% favorite. You can't do more than that in poker. He's got the guy drawing to the sole, you know, three queens in the deck. And look at that, queen on the river gives Brennan the straight. Brennan's got a bit of a mouth on him. You know, he can he can get under people's skin. I think that's set me up for what I know is what's going to happen today. Faith, mate. Have faith, focus, focus. And how do you handle that if you're Paresh? Uh, I mean, you, he must be rattled. He, he must be stunned. Well, I'm fight back if I can win it now, it'd be a miracle. That's the, that's the challenge, you know, win it from here. If you can win it from here, we saw Marty Smith win the poker million from a very similar stack. I mean, it can be done, Parrish. Keep the faith. And poor Paresh Patel, what's he got? $300? He's basically got, I'd say, five hands. Yeah, he needs to make a move pretty quickly. Blind's 25.50. He's only got 300 <coughs> chips. He's got to to do something sooner rather than later. Well, as you said, Nick, we've seen some miraculous comebacks, not only already in this tournament, but in the history of this format. Um, <coughs> I'm going to raise it. Raise. And, you know, if you give this young no, man some cards, oh there. my two, two, lord! Five total, which is what two, I'm going to make it. Now, so Henry I'm Paul, he w he slow played the big pairs a lot in his heat. Um, how should he be thinking about this in in reaction to to Jason Brennan's? Well, Jason's raised an early position. Probably likely he's got a decent holding. He can do either. Raised now he's made a very small raise and he knows that Jason doesn't like folding for a small raise. You just saw that he called Parrish's small raise with a hand like Jack 10. So he wants to keep him in. It might be tipping off the strength right. of his hand a bit much, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. But isn't it a nice idea? He I saw that Jason nice. was kind of on a tight wire, if you know what I mean, and shoved lightly. He's giving him the opportunity to do that here, isn't he? Even pre-flop. I think Jason will just end up calling uh, the, the extra uh, chips, but uh, he's got so many yeah. chips, you see, he'll see a flop. But uh, if this ball comes deuce two six or eight seven three or something like that, two nines can be in some trouble here. Henry Paul, no easy customer himself. Look at that focus he's got on his. Um, obviously, not a man to be toyed with. And this opens up some really interesting possibilities. Well, it gives the opportunity for Brennan to bluff Paul off kings. Uh, I think he's going to check, check, and I think Henry's going to check. check as well. Is, yeah, is 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 checking overall the right play? Because you you can't if you bet that ace, you can't get called by a hand that you're beating. You can get called by two nines. I mean, it's not the worst situation in the world, but but it's a pot control line. You're not going to get money in over three streets here. So checking the flop and then. If, if you get checked to now, betting would be fairly standard here with two kings. I just wonder, if Henry is checking this flop, he has to call the turn a lot of times, doesn't he? Almost 100% of the time if he's, if he's called. If uh, Jason bets out on the turn, he has to call a bet. He might just want to get one street of value and check it down. I mean, you talk about pot control, but I'm just thinking... Uh, this pot is so big in relation to the blinds already that... Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. there's 10.75 in there. Jason cannot check here. If he checks, Henry's just going to check behind. I bet. 400? 375. Okay, 375. so he's bet 375. <coughs> and Henry has to call. And I think the way he's played the hand, he has to call. I mean, that nine hasn't made anything too out... Outrageous or spectacular. Henry's very lucky that that nine didn't come on the flop instead of the ace. If the, if the board is nine, do seven instead of ace, do seven, he goes broke. So he can just get away with calling and doing some of his stack. I'll leave it to you to tell him how lucky he is after he sees the hand. <laughs> he must... Uh 
very, very tough to think about folding here. Um, his kings have been underrepresented now, haven't they? But he seems to really be thinking about it. You might believe this kid. You know, maybe Brennan wouldn't have bet. He's been living on the river, Jason Brennan, and it's been kind to him so far. Wow, he's head down. He's hiding. Immobile. He wants a call. He knows his hand's good. And if Henry could find a reason to fold this, what would it be? It's very difficult. The reason that he can find to fold is what kind of hands is Paul turning into a bluff here? The way um, Jason turning into a bluff, the way Henry Paul's played its hand, it, it looks like an overpair. This is a kind of smallish bet that doesn't get through that often. You're not going to get kings, queens, jacks to fold that often. So what would he be betting? He can only beat air, and yet because of the bet size, it doesn't look like air. That's what you're saying? And the air bet comes comes on the turn more often than it comes on the river. It's gone check, check on the flop. I think if uh, Jason's going to bluff this, he might be looking to, to, to take a stab on it on the turn. But... No, he genuinely, he has called. I, I, he genuinely must have felt some strength over there from Brennan. And, uh, yeah, that'll take it down. Ow, he oh, says. Sick. sick. Yeah. Told you. But la e s d e Bless. We're not playing poker here today, my friends. We're playing something altogether different. This is a message to someone. When a guy... <sighs> has two outs against you, Nick. You shouldn't be worried about giving free cards, right? But at the same time, when it comes, uh, I mean, how do you balance that? You know, you've got the guy drawn to two outs. I mean, sometimes even checking behind on the turn again and let the guy bluff the river is a, is a, is a good line. I mean, he's just unlucky. But Henry's down in sixth place, lost half his stack after that pot, Jesse. He sure is, $1,000. He played so well in his heat, Henry Paul. Uh, and he got some big hands. Um, converted them all. Um, when you get those, that big pair cracked, sometimes it's tough to recover. You know how it is. You get knocked out of a big tournament or a friend does. They're always talking about aces cracked, kings cracked, crack cracked. Cracker Jack. I'm the one on cracking them with my I crack <laughs> aces with seven, four of diamonds. I like playing all of those type of hands. Cool. Cool. And Henry Paul limping in here. Now, this is his rebound pot. Uh, who is it that says it's not how you lose the hand, it's what you do the next hand? I hope for Henry Paul's sake he can settle himself down here. And if it comes the ace, ay ay ay. That's why you don't play these kinds of hands. They're too dominated too often. He's a little bit out of position as well. Nice flop for Jean Van de Velde. But, but a better flop for Dave Boyd McCauley. He's got three H, Jesse. Van de Velde here, underrepresented ace queen with top pair, top kicker. This could be a very, very big pot. There he is. And Raise. we've seen before that Jean Van de Velde, he doesn't like putting She's big hands seven. down. Um, this is a big hand. I know it's, it's not the nuts, but ace queen here is a big hand, isn't it? It's a very big hand. It's not easy to flop top pair, top kicker, but there are three eights out there. When professionals play, they could be raising flush draws, straight draws. I mean, it's very, very tricky what to do here. Is Davy Boy McCauley capable of making this move without an eight? Check. Cool. <coughs> From what I've seen, I don't think so. But is John Vanderville capable of getting away from Ace Queen? That's the real question here, and I don't think so either. That diamond has definitely changed the texture of this board. I mean, Davey well, it's another reason for Vanderville to fold his hand. I mean, would you ever check here if you're Davy Boy? There's no, it's good about four fifty. Four fifty. He called it, Nick. Now, at this stage, Nick. Um, Vondeville doesn't have enough chips left um, to really do anything but 
be all in, if you know what I mean. He can even if he calls here, he's gonna have so few chips. Call? What's he got? What's he got back? Is it even four or five hundred? This pot's big now. He he's totally pot committed. I don't see, you know, re really what he's thinking he's gonna do on the river. There's two thousand in there. He's only gonna have something like four hundred behind. So he he's pot committed. Check I'll put you all in. Of course you will. I see it. Okay. He wants to see it. And Davy Boy is going to show it to him. Three eights. And I don't think John Vandervelde's realized yet, but he soon will. Played so fantastic in his This people's Thank champion, you. the French sporting hero. Uh, Two, good luck. Yeah. Very classy Good man. Good luck. And, uh, See you. Early out. See you, Thomas. Good luck. It was a 6 a.m. tea time. Yes. See you. And he's going to the clubhouse now. Thank and you. Look See at you. the spirit of the game. He goes around the table, smiles, shakes every one hand. What an absolute gentleman yeah. this guy is. And for Davy Boy McCauley, um, mm. you know, he, he really just danced around in the early rounds of his heat. Oh, but here at the final right? table, yeah. he's come out <laughs> swinging. I'm not disappointed. I lost. I was very, very happy with the with the, the hit, you know, with the with the golfers and with my flight. We had a great time. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, today was a, was a little different. Uh, the vibes was a little bit different around the table, and you know, that's uh, that's where it goes. Dave McCauley, chip leader, 46.75. Uh, Jason, amazing. He's got more chips than Brennan, but he he uh, busted Vandeville twice. And, you know, hit him in the lips, took the knockout punch, Nick. You think back to McCauley's heat. Um, he might have been guilty, perhaps, of underbetting his hands. He went for maximum value. He got it. Well, I think he Sorry. understood that John van der Velde liked to call when he when he fell in love with his hand. John van der Velde, you know, sometimes didn't understand the absolute strength of his hand versus the relative strength of his opponent's hand and got carried away thinking, I've got top pair, top kicker. He didn't really think what Davey had, and Davey exploited that and got the maximum. Henry Paul, obviously he knows the ace-king's a good oh. hand. Um, mm. The situation, Pass. though, a thousand stack isn't Pass. awkward here with the blind size. Pass. It is a bit awkward. You know, you raise to 150, get two callers, you miss the flop. Now you Pass. put in another 15% of your stack. He's just called, but he's luckily for him, he's got this pot heads up. and uh, But he hasn't got the guy dominated. So if Jason hits the nine of the queen. Check. Yeah, you fear because uh, for Henry Paul here, because obviously... Um, you know, because of what's happened with him and Jason already, he's going to be inclined towards getting his chips in, isn't he? You feel like that anyway, and who would blame him? Sometimes that's the reason you, you got to raise. Uh-oh. God, didn't you just see it? Where isn't the writing on the wall? I mean, he's limped, so well, normally you would check to a razor, but, but there hasn't been a razor, so now Jason's going to bet out. Ace-King really isn't a hand on boards like this. I mean, Jason's made a... A nice bet, and he's done the right bet here, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think wow. Henry's done the right thing. He's conserving his stack. He's got, Certainly you know, has. six outs. So what's he going to do if Jason bets the turn again? I mean, he probably has to lay it down there, but he should have raised before the flop, Jesse. Class pass. Right, Henry Paul, who's had no joy to shout about so far. Um, but this is a very versatile man. He switched from league to union. I'm told that less than one in 500 rugby players can do that. I go into this on my own. It's an individual sport poker. Um, had a little help from my brother. He's been trying to tip me up on things, the right things to do and not to do, but uh, I'm, I come from a team sport, so it's, it's a lot easier when you can bounce ideas off other players. Today it's all by yourself, so it's something new. But you know, I'm, I'm, it's quite exciting. I'm wrapped that I beat Pete Richards and, and Andy Gomesall, to be honest. Just those two was, would, have, would have done me fine. But to actually get into the final, um, well, you know, nothing, it's first, first time, first experience. So um, I'm going to make sure I uh, eat a lot of the free food, have a lot of the free drink, <laughs> and then uh, whatever happens in the cards, well, that's up to the 
Up to the gods. Macaulay and Brennan. Between them. The nine out of the 14,000 chips in play. So you talk about kind of the funny ironies here. Um, yes. There's... Um, Do there's dollars oh. on the table and pounds in the prize money. <laughs> Fourteen thousand dollars in chips, thirty-five thousand pounds. It's odd. But chips are not money until you cash them in. Scott O'Reilly's been very, very quiet. Um, he's basically protected his starting stack. He just can't get in a pot. Now it's yep. it's Paresh Patel. It's Henry Paul who limped. And Paresh yes. Patal, who moved all in, um, it was a good sort of isolation move there, wasn't it? Um, I mean, yeah, ace nine against the limping range of uh, Henry Paul. Good enough to get it in. He's very, very low. You're in a race, Parrish, against the Davy boy. I've got two overs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Macaulay taking the gamble on. Chance to knock a player out? Absolutely. Got to be the ace or nine. There are some five, other outs now. Paired board, good for the overcards. A spade on the turn, a five counterfeits, an ace or a nine. You're right, Jesse. The percentages haven't changed that much after this flop, as we can see. Seven. And now it gets more interesting. A five, a six, a seven, a nine. Or an ace. And this is going to be one of those heats. If he hits it, I just have a feeling this is going to be oh. one of those heats, but he's missed. Unlucky. Well, well, Paresh Patel, the yeah, trip ace is cracked. Um, <laughs> you know, that's one of those things that happens at a final table. You just say it wasn't meant to be. Uh, it wasn't. An H young. <laughs> I feel very sad leaving the table because there's a great opportunity today to win the title. And I don't think I did anything wrong, so I don't, you know, I think I played pretty well today. But it's just, you know, when the cards go for you, they do. If they don't, you get the early bus home. Davy Boy McCauley, probably one of the more unheralded sports heroes to make the final table. And he seems to have upped his game. Absolutely, he played well in his heat, he changed gears nicely and now look at him, he's chip leader, Davy Boy McCauley, ex-world champion, top notch in his game and proving good at our game, Jesse. You mentioned at the start of this final, Nick, that when we lost a few players there would be some interesting strategy decisions related to the prize structure. Are we, are we there yet? I mean... We're starting to get there. How the big stacks react to the medium and small stacks around bubble time is important. I'm not going to start mentioning ICM, but you know what I mean. These decisions, the chips are worth something. The chips have monetary value at some stage in relation to the other stacks, in relation to the blinds. And it basically means if there's a very tiny stack with four left and the chip leader puts you in and you have a medium stack, you have to just fold. You have to wait for that small stack to go to get yourself in the money. So, and uh, Brennan there limping into one of the smaller stacks. And look at that. Henry Paul, 3-5, offsuit, firing. He needs to make aggressive moves with a short stack, and he's got the heart and the commitment to stick his chips in with not very much. 5-3 is not exactly a premium hand. He sensed weakness and was willing to lay his entire tournament on the line. He's smiling. Yes. He's smiling. 5-3. He's biding and smiling. Yes. Button for Brennan. A lot of sort of famous Brennans. What's the name? Politics. Yes. Cool. Cool. Um, now, I wonder if Henry Paul has a line on Thomas Helmer. Um, 
we know he he hasn't he has to know he hasn't moved a chip yet um big big reason to have raised pre-flop but this is even better and there's going to be some chips moving here jesse helmer with the top pair henry oh. paul with bottom two pair this could be action 300 and 300. even though henry paul's got a strong hand you bet out on these coordinated flops don't you because you can get action by drawing you drawing. can get a action from drawing hands you also protect your hand you also get action from tens that might not give you action if the if the turn is like a eight of clubs I mean, yep, betting out here is a good, good long run plan. Well played, Henry. Let's see what happens. A 10 here with these stack sizes, it's too difficult. You can't really call and then just fold on the turn because that would be pot committing yourself, really. You'd shove if you were Helmer. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't like it very much. Again, you know, poker's about making the decisions. Folding is a bit bad, calling is a bit bad, and going all in is a bit bad. You just, in a cash game, I would call and see a turn and use my position and weigh things up. But in this format, it's it's really tough, Jesse. It's interesting that there's a couple of cards now that he has called. I'm gonna say that could have slowed the action down. Um, Helmer actually thinks that it looks like a pretty good card. I mean, if you're Helmer, it looks like a breeze. And we card. know in reality, Jesse, it's a bad card for him. The board really hasn't changed that much. There isn't a straight there now. There isn't a flush there now. We know in reality. All in. Yeah, I mean. He was always going to be facing this bet on the turn, Helmer, and you feel like he always knew he was going to be facing it. Henry Paul's in a corner here with 550 in his stack. So he rolled his eyes, kind of nodded his head. You're <coughs> right, Dizzy. He knew he was going to face that bet on the turn. You know, Henry Paul's chip stack meant that that was going to always happen. And. You know, with all the draws and made hands and whatever, he really had to make his decision on the flop. He's got to call 550 now, 1350 in there. Uh, you know, he's getting over two to one. I don't really see a way out for him here. Is there? How much is it? Is there some sort of idea where you're <coughs> saying, well, look, um, the hands that I beat still have a lot of equity against me. The hands that are beating me, I don't have much equity against, or you just look at that 513.50 and say overall I've got to be more than 33 percent yeah you're, yeah he's called you're, you're right in both cases uh, what you've just said there Jesse but there's just a bit too much money in the pot and uh, Henry Paul's gonna be in super duper shape just drawing to one of the two tens left in the deck and, and how about this I mean obviously pretty unlucky for Thomas Helmer um, but how about Henry Paul basically done um, at one stage, his kings got crushed. He's going to be back to his starting stack. Yeah, this is a key pot. He'll be over the moon to... Now he is. The ace is a safe card. He'll be over the moon to get back to 1900. As we said before, Jesse, going down and getting back to your starting stack, you feel a lot happier than somebody has 4,000 and goes back down to 2,000. And, uh, yeah, look at that. 800 up to 1,900. And for Helmer, you know, it's this irony, isn't it? You go in there, you say, I'm going to play tight. I'm going to wait until we lose a few players. The blinds go up. That's the first hand he's played. He's done half his stack. He, he didn't even want to play the hand. He didn't want to play the hand, but it was a big blind, small blind type situation. He was forced to play the hand. There wasn't a raise, and he ended up flopping top pair. It's it's just one of those really disgusting, unfortunate situations for him. Isn't that the thing about a game plan, though? You always you go in with a tight game plan, and sometimes it just doesn't matter. That's why we love poker. We're sick for it. All of these, the best laid plans are made to rest in a lot of occasions in <laughs> poker. You know what they say about having a plan at the final table, don't you? The plan at the final table is always to just forget about the plan because <laughs> you, <laughs> because you, the pressure can crack you up. Race to one seventy-five. Has to be two hundred minimum. All right, so two hundred. Two minimum, yeah. Race two hundred total. Wow, Henry Paul. Now. He got to see the two. I'm just overall oh. because of the interplay between him and Jason yes. Brennan. Um, I was going to think he would want to actually make a big raise there, but I, I don't know. I mean, what, what's the idea? Well, 
you would think that you should re-raise Ace King here. He has yes. a lot of pre-flop equity. Wow, Scott's laid down for a hundred more in the big blind, getting that kind of price. Jason Brennan's got two ways to win this. One way to hit the flop, the other way to blow Henry Paul out the pot. Now you would think if you've raised with the 9-4 as a steal and you've got your first to act and you've got the lead, you'd bet again. Let's see. Raise it to 450. Wow, 450. and that's a big bet. Now, Henry Paul's got to take a deep breath here. He's got 1700 there. The bet's 450. Call or raise all in? If you think the guy's going to bluff again all in on the turn, then call. If you think that the guy's not going to do that, or just... Raise a thousand. Yeah. We raised to a thousand total. You don't need to protect your hand. I mean, I normally call in spots like this. There's, n there's no rush. Now now you've raised, you're basically saying you've got a king or better. So, um, This guy's very aggressive, this Jason Brennan. Maybe calling and let him hang himself on a diamond turn. He's the kind of guy that if it comes a flush draw on a turn for him, he maybe would have taken a shot at the pot again. But yeah, uh, face king. Wow, what a good read from Jason there. No re-raise pre-flop, and he's still named Henry Paul's hand. That's impressive, Jesse. It is impressive. You know, and we saw on his heat, Jason Brennan, he's got a very good idea of where he's at in hands. She got left there. Remember, this is the Jason Brennan show. Yeah. <coughs> what he's doing here is like saying to the rest of the table and Henry Paul, if you raise me, I'm going to put you through the mill. Yep. And this stops people bluffing him in the future. I think that this Absolutely. kind of signal goes Same through to people's yeah. subconscious mind. They're yep. not going to so want to tangle with it. Total, that would be what? You're absolutely. 50. The first time you do this, it sends a message, doesn't it? Yeah, people are just, well, we're all human. We don't want to go through the mill if we bluff okay. him and he's going to do this to us. I mean, look, he's got absolutely nothing and he's seen you got 30 seconds to act. Right, yeah, it's over. Pass. Right, yeah. uh, we're giving this one off. Tournament director Mad Marty Wilson mm -hmm. brought the clock in. Uh, mm -hmm. 30 mm -hmm. seconds to act to your hand mm -hmm. is dead. And uh, that wrapped that up. I didn't feel it off you too much either, but it, was, uh, it wasn't on me too much either. So, yeah, I'll let you have that Ball takes. That's one referee that doesn't need the instant replay, Matt Marty. Uh, leaderboard. Brennan, has he lost a lot of chips or just a little? He's bled some back, but, you know, he's playing aggressively. It's folded to him with some chips. He's raising 9-4 of diamonds. He's betting king high boards. He's showing some initiative, so I like that. Nothing to worry about this at this stage, Jesse. And go on, Henry Paul. And Henry Paul's come back. He got damaged early on, but now he's back to 2,700 chips. Third place, right in contention. Five left on this final table. Last man standing takes the title. Join us for more after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Sports Stars Challenge for Is Henry Paul at all looking down at his stack and saying, okay, Henry, now you've gotten <laughs> some some chips back. Is he going to play these any different? <laughs> I think he's going to stick to his fairly solid game plan. He's been doing well. He got low. He's back up to nearly 3,000 in chips. Cool. If the wheel ain't broken, don't fix it. He'll be happy yes. where he is now. The one that's really yes. going to force it, in my opinion, might be Jason. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, you could say that 9-4, if it had worked, it's the kind of thing, if it works, you're singing his praises, and if it doesn't work, you say no he was a little too aggressive too soon. I wonder what the right answer is. The right answer is I'm singing his praises anyway. He's got the big stack, he raised in position, he bet the flop, and he folded when he was crushed. So, you know, regardless of the outcome, he played the hand quite well. I'm all in. All in. Now, this is a pot against Helmer's stack. So he hasn't moved all in for 3,000. He's bet probably the best 700 probably into 375. Make. Has Helmer called? Helmer's called here with Helmer, Ace-5, yeah. Wow. Um, and there is a, a, a method for, for Helmer's call here. 
he he must be putting <coughs> Brennan on a certain amount of draws that he he beats. Is that well? There's not that many draws on this board, you know. There's some I straight draws around the six two. four, but uh, and he's not really getting pot yeah. odds here, is he? I no, mean, he moved in for twice the amount of the pot. I mean, in sure Brennan's mind, in Jason's that mind, that whatever he bet, that if that the guy went all in, he was going to call. So. He decided just anyway. to go all in, which wasn't unreasonable. But, I mean, you know, Helmer's cool with the ace five here. So 25% of the time he's going to win. That's not one of the cards he needs. A six uh, is, is sort of an extra out here. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah. Um, a six, yeah. Helmer was even even quite lucky to find that the five would end up being a winning now. card, which it is. Ask for too and much now, he's he gone, Thomas Helmer, and <laughs> you know he, he I really. We I mean, today, he, he, part of it was probably the cards that ten deuce, but he'll look back on this and say he lost his chips without ever really having a chance. Yeah, that was an unfortunate run of cards there for Helmer. He he, he got into a pot that he didn't want to get involved with in and ended up losing his chips. So unlucky for Helmer there. Helmer was super in his heat. We saw what he did to Molby and to Burr, but uh, tonight he just could not hold on to the ball. Unfortunately for him, he came up with a nice tight solid game plan, looking to maybe make his move later on, but the way the cards fell, he got trapped by his own hand. Five is my favorite number, so I tried to... Uh, I only had a few ships, so uh, it was not very difficult for me to decide to, to go all in. But uh, it doesn't work today. <laughs> if you like watching poker, or when you're watching poker, this has to be one of your favorite parts of a tournament, the proverbial bubble. Um, there's three prizes here at the final table, Nick. There's four guys. There's not enough chairs for prizes. This is the bubble situation. The one who goes out next will get zero. Unfortunately for somebody, that's going to be the case. And uh, the chip nice. leader should realize that. If I was one of the big stacks now, nice. Dave McCauley or Jason, I'd be raising Henry Paul and Scott O'Reilly's big blind every single time. And that fold there uh, by Scott O'Reilly, the ace three, that's an opinionated sort of fold, right? Everyone knows you have to be aggressive when you're on the bubble, but the short cool. stacks can't really be aggressive, can they? They, they, they can be aggressive Race. in a different way, um, but they basically don't want to get themselves Race in situations four. where they can go out. This is good for Scott. Scott's the low stack. Every single time, Race. Henry Paul. Wow. All in. Now, I don't know, did Henry Paul announce his raise size yet? Yeah, he's, he's announced raise to 500, and Jason Brennan, has re-raised all in. This is a limp re-shove. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Mathematically, two fours with Scott Riley on a low stack. He cannot call in this situation. It's just, there's gonna be no money for fourth. And maybe Jason knows that. He's like, I'm putting you to the test. This is great, great poker. I love the way he's played this hand. I think that this is the play of the tournament I've seen so far, Jesse. And you can see Henry Paul just, he's <clears throat> squirming a little bit. This is uncomfortable. He knows if he's up against over cards, it's a race. Um, but situationally, bad time for him to take a race on, even though he's getting, you know, this math odds. Yeah, I mean, it's not a clear-cut case of uh, cards like in a cash game. We are on the bubble. We are playing a tournament format. And you know what? Jason has made the move at the moment. The chip leader's out the pot. If this goes wrong, he's still going to have a lot of chips behind. He can put the pressure on Henry Paul. And you know what? Even if the cards do go on their back, it's 50-50. He's gotten the chips in first. And you talk about sending messages. How about this message? I mean, he hasn't said anything, but he's saying, I got more chips than you. You're going to no. have to be careful. Henry Paul knew exactly what was going on in there. Jason made a great play. For me, I'll say it again, that was one of the plays of the tournament so far for me. Who's the daddy? Right now, North London Jason Brennan um, has done everything, but uh, rap an Eminem song. <clears throat> Five thousand twenty-five, and he has made a lot of really strong statements tonight. He's, you know, he's he's uh, 
starting with his jacket. That's one hell of a jacket. That's a three thousand pound leather Adidas top. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably going to need at least four pri a third prize to uh, get out of it on that, on that top. And the baseball cap and the shades. I mean, he can raise these two cards if he wants to. These short stacks are not really doing anything. Pass. Two threes may be a bit too low down the rankings, oh. but... Cool. Now, what has Scott O'Reilly done here? Well, Henry Paul's just limped. Pass. He's moved all in. He's got to get some respect. The guy's hardly played a hand, so Henry Paul quite wisely folding Jack-5 off suit. But, and but Scott needs the oxygen. He needs to pick up those little bit of chips that's in the middle now. You know, he's up to 1725. Yeah. What is my Henry Paul's a clever guy. He's going to pick this up pretty soon. Um, this game has gone to a different place, hasn't it? Yep. Dave McCauley's staying out of this. Jason's pushing this game. I love watching this at the moment. This is exciting. There ain't no limping no more. Um, if you want to win a pot, you have to use muscle. And that's not a clam. He's got the Jerry Yang pose. He sits there impassively. We'd look at him leaning on his hands. Pass. It would be hard to get a read. All in. How much have you got? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We might have a bubble boy. O'Reilly didn't want to hear that question, that's for sure. Although, you know, Ace, Ace Nine is a pretty strong hand. Yeah, we know it's a pretty strong hand, blind on blind, to move in for 10 bigs. But look at this. Dave McCauley's picked up Ace King of Hearts. And when he knows what the count is, when he knows how many chips he'll have left behind, he's going to call. Yeah, I'll call. There cool. we go. Yeah. He uh, has. And this is automatic for O'Reilly. This is called just getting blanked out, right? This is a cold deck right here. He hasn't really played a hand. <clears throat> a pretty automatic situation. Need some help, please, Steven. Yeah, that is... As you say, plan B. <laughs> plan B, talk nice to the dealer and caress the shuffling machine. Okay. That just might work. Kind of help I need. The ace and the nine. Well, it's he's not a over yet. He's a massive favorite, though. Look at the percentages there, 82, 17. Wow. It's not over yet. You're right, yeah, Jesse. No, Maybe you so know something I don't. Backdoor hearts. Backdoor hearts, oh, Jesse. Yeah. And the queen That's looms nice. large, too. Look at this. A third of the deck <laughs> for Macaulay. Scott O'Reilly didn't want to see that, and he faded it. That is, you know, you talk oh, yeah. about a blank. The okay, black duck, the deuce of clubs, that is every poker player's dream of a blank river. That's the card the poker players call for when they want a blank. They say, put a deuce on the river, and a deuce it came. Scott O'Reilly now takes second place. It balances out all the stacks anyone can win from here. I was on the final table of one of the GUKPTs, the British Poker Tour. Um, uh, down in Plymouth and uh, it's quite an experience to sit obviously with the whole cam and that's very different to what you're used to but it's a great, it's a great sort of uh, adrenaline rush it makes you play very very uh, differently perhaps um, but yeah and uh, last last six tables the World Series uh, main event and that was a great rush having like a massive rail just watching you and like cheering on at every big hand and everything it's not the norm for sitting down and playing poker to be honest. Generally when I sit down to play, I'll just take it as poker. It doesn't really matter what the size of the tournament is or how deep in the tournament we are. It's like I've got a certain amount of big blinds, I've got a position at this point and things like that that you've got to consider. It's not really the money that matters, it's like just play the best game you can. Scott O'Reilly has got himself right back in this. Got a quick look at his stack. Chips mean time. And he knows how to hang around. You don't get that deep in the main Pass. event without knowing how to stay in. <laughs> Davey McCauley, does he look worried? No, he's taken some lumps in his life. So, because of the dynamics between these two, it was limp, raise, shove last time. Is it just a straight raise here? Is a limp okay? I mean, 
Yeah, he's got to think oh. about the stack sizes now. Henry Paul's got less chips. If he limps and Henry Paul raises, he might be a bit more pot committed. So maybe just a straight raise. Now, With the intention of folding to a shove. Right. Yeah, possibly. I mean, he's got 8-3, but uh, I don't know. Henry Paul, he's got that look of consternation on his face. Does he want to be bullied? Cool. He should be going all in here because I tell you what, if he misses the flop and Brennan bets out as a continuation bet, he's going to win. So Henry Paul's taking a big gamble here. Right, he's he's basically reducing himself to, to winning with the best hand, and that's it. Yeah, if this if he misses the flop, I mean, what does he do on this type of board? Oh, he he, he has the king of diamonds, so uh, he's going nowhere. Now there's 800 in there, and Henry Paul has oh, I guess okay. about 18. If oh. they're over the line, it's a, it's not a string, but if they're all over the line at the same time, is it? No, it's the way you drop them down. Oh, all right. Okay, do I have to get so what is the min raise on that Okay, hand? Marty, the gentleman dropped his chips down like that. So they're all over the line hand. at the same okay. time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just In my opinion, it was his intention to raise the 200, okay. so we let the 200 go. Okay. 200. Yeah, I think that's a good decision. That looked like what he was trying to do. Um, Now, from from Henry Paul, um, this is giving a hand. Uh, he he must think in his mind that does he think that Brennan has something? I mean, this is dangerous, isn't it? Brennan bet very very small. He bet two hundred into eight hundred there. Now again, this is another card. The board hasn't changed, so it's going to keep two hundred. It's an amazing sort of yeah. bet. If he, I mean, I'm just thinking, if he thinks Henry Paul is drawing and uh, he's going to try and blow him out on the river, is that what he's doing? I think he might just, yeah, do something wacky on the river if it comes like the, I don't know, nine of clubs. Wow. And if he does bet big, I mean. He has to bet big, though. I, I'm just thinking, Henry. I don't know if he's thinking about this, but he has to think to himself, um, what, ra you know, it, it didn't look like an ace the way he bet. He certainly would have bet bigger with an ace. Ace is full, maybe, but not an ace. I'm calling with the king high a lot of the time here. Let's see what the bet size is from Jason Brennan, though. I mean, talk about the different ways Brennan would have... 800. And that's a much bigger bet. It's been 200, 200, and now it's 800. He's really using his chip stack to put Henry Paul underneath the cosh. But and it's a real puzzle here, a real puzzle. I mean, how do you figure out the puzzle? How do you think about if he would have the ace or not? Wow. Has he called? He hasn't called yet. I thought he called. <laughs> I thought he called! <laughs> I am indifferent as to whether I think he's going to call if he can piece this together and look at the bet sizing now this is a time i might start talking to my man use the benefit of live poker just to see if i can pick up any other information i'm, I'm an online player i don't normally do things like that but you were right jesse would he have really made these bet sizes along these streets with an ace i don't know maybe with aces full yeah and, but and maybe with a flush i don't know he would have checked a flush i mean on the river three deuces out there oh wow he's folded it brennan I mean, he strung him along, and then he absolutely bamboozled him. You're absolutely right, Jesse. You saw that coming a mile off. These small bets were going to set up a big bet on the river. He made that big bet on the river. It effectively put Henry Paul all in. And you know what? Fair play to him. He showed some commitment and guts there to win the pot. It did. And to make that play, he had to take a line that... Henry wasn't calling with an ace, but that Henry was calling with a draw. Right. Then he had to find the guts to pull the trigger on the river, and he couldn't make too big a bet on the turn. That was the key too, wasn't it? And on the flop. If he starts building the pot too big on the flop and the turn, he can't put Henry all in on the river because Henry's all in on the turn. He made small bets to leave a pot-sized bluff bet on the river. Maybe we're not giving this guy enough credit. Maybe this is a guy we should have heard about a bit before, but he he's definitely the, set that play up. Who is the poker player that used to talk? I think it might have been Johnny Chan about, or Stu Unger even, just talking about, you know, I like to uh, 
to make to call these bets. You know, I, I know I could raise them off on the flop, but I want to get more money in on the turn before I bluff the river. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very... Uh, if you're going to play against opponents that are just going to, you know, normally I would do stuff like that in position. But if you're playing against opponents that you can do that to, and unfortunately Henry's not a professional poker player, then fair play. I would have called a lot of the time with King High. I'm not saying I would have done, but I, I might have done. Now, let, let, let's be honest. I mean, um, that play that Brennan made, that's what you call high, uh, high variance sort of play. You're, that play is not going to work. If Some, can a lot of the time if as well. He, if he can convince me that those bet sizing was to manipulate the size of the pot so he could get more money and then shove the river if it was a blank, then Check. then then I think it's a beautiful play. I mean, credit where credit's due. I mean, uh, Brennan hasn't exactly endeared himself to the to the rest of the table, to the table yeah, but you know what? Uh, he's winning. He's doing nothing uh, wrong. He's got twoed. And I'll tell you what, he, there's a reason he's got all these chips. Yes. Um, and what is happening here? He check. I mean, he's doing things very fancy now. He may have fancy play syndrome. Was checked him on the flop. He checked. Um, now he's let Henry Paul lead into him on the turn. Um, I guess he's going to set Henry all in, but this this feels like a little too much. No, I think I mean. he's trapping the flop, and he's just going to call the turn. I think he knows he's miles and miles ahead here, and uh, he's got position. And I think he's just going to snap call Henry Paul on a on a blank river. But was was Queen Seven strong enough to be checking the flop with? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's a bit fancy hand syndrome. The normal players to bet there, but uh, it's not exactly Check. the nuts. Yeah, the ace was a bit of a bad card, and uh, he's winning every pot, every which way. He's maximized the hands. Um, this is a full-scale assault on this trophy. I'm confident about my game. I've always been confident about my game. Look, my game got me here. I like to do a lot of poker to get here, so I'm confident. I'm just going to get and have some fun today. Do you know what I mean? I'm here. I didn't. Even, I, I didn't imagine I'd get to the final. No, I am. I'm just going to have some fun. I can't fly a jet. I can't go to wherever I want in the world at the drop of a hat. And the prize money from this is not going to change that. Whatever I win, it's just going to be there. It's nice to have it, but it's not important. What it really is important to me is winning that trophy and holding it and saying, yeah, I'm Jason Brennan, North London, representing. And to hold that trophy and say I'm Sports Stars Challenge champion is not going to happen every year it's a once in a lifetime opportunity so that means more to me than anything well jason is definitely taking this seriously new hat new top and he's playing out of his skin believe me there's plenty it's worse the strategies the than the look good feel good run good it's worked before oh davy boy mccauley i mean walk softly and carry a big stick he doesn't have to pretend tough. The button for Brennan. He seems he's asked if the blinds are going up soon. Um, you know, has he kind of said to himself, "That's when I'm going to really crank in another gear." I don't know what the next gear is for him, um, unless this poker player goes to eleven. Right. Another marginal decision. All the tricky decisions are Henry Paul's. What does he do? Stick it in. Oh. Easy, easy decision. Why? Because he's short in chips. There's a button raise. He has a decent hand. He just has to gamble. What about the bubble? You were talking about the bubble. Well. He's getting called here. He's got no fold equity. Oh, yeah. He's got a very, very short stack. At the end of the day, though, he's getting to the point where he can't, he is the lowest stack, but he's the one that makes the move. It's the guys that have the medium stacks that don't have to make the move. So you're saying a bigger reason for Scott O'Reilly to fold here than you, there was for... Yeah, I mean, Henry Paul, if he doesn't do anything, he's just going to blind out. So that can't be the solution. He just has to pick what he thinks is a good spot. Getting the chips in first is obviously more optimal because obviously... You, you don't have to go to showdown. But, um, you know, Jason's using his stack well. 
The temperature is rising, Nick, and so are the blinds. Um, Henry Paul, it's not going to get any easier for him. And with Jason Brennan to act before him, he may not find a look in first. Should that be enough? Well, I really should, huh? Or does he have too many now? No, he's got nine big blinds, blinds one and 200, 300 in the pot. He's got a stack of 1,800. He's got nine big blinds. He should be raising and calling the rest off. 600. Okay, 600. Six, he's leaving himself 12 back. Um, now this is going to be quite interesting. Uh, oh no, wow. Macaulay looks like he wishes he hadn't looked. Oh, look at him. How do you think about this, Nick? Um, Henry Paul can be moving in with a lot of hands. Scott knows that, doesn't need a premium hand. I'm going to get it all in with the ace-king and try and win the side pot against Scott O'Reilly. As it happens, Sc Scott O'Reilly has the best hand. But Scott O'Reilly could easily have an ace-10, ace-jack, ace-queen type hand here as well. But because of the bubble, Macaulay completely, without looking at his hand, has to be thinking to himself, if I fold, then Paul has to call and I could be seeing a player out. Does that mean he's not going for the win if he does it? Or This is actually a more complicated situation than it looks on face value. We're on the bubble. We are at the end of a sit and go. And there, there is some very, very, I mean, I'm not saying that's the wrong fold. I, I think it's a lot closer than people normally think. We're not 10 tables out to the final table of a multi-table tournament with four left, three get paid. And when Brennan folds, and he's always folding here, Riley shoved his chips in, uh, Henry Paul has a serious, serious decision. Um, it seemed like, well, maybe it's not a decision at all. He's put too many chips in. He's pot committed to this. He has to now just put the rest of it in. He's getting three to one nearly getting the price even against this hand that dominates him. He is getting the price, but Scott O'Reilly plays two eights exactly the same. He's got to put Scott on a range cool. of hands. Yeah, he oh, has to call. Nice. He has to just shake his head and call. And the really bad news for Henry Paul is that um, Macaulay folded an ace. Uh, it's thin, but there's a win, and he is all in. Needs to pull out a hat trick here. That's not good. The ace, the best card. Very soon, the ace might be the only card. And that was Dave McCauley's ace king. He would have won a three way massive pot all in. He elected to fold. Only two aces left in the deck now for Paul. Riviera! Henry Paul out in fourth on the bubble. He started to make some all-in moves. Sooner or later, he was going to have to take the race. Didn't get there. Uh, it was a tough day at the office for Henry Paul. It really was. I see the, the rugby boys, they're going to, you know, the banter's going to be flowing. They're going to call me a girl and, and a bit of a, a bit weak because uh, I didn't go, but I'm more aggressive. But, um, I didn't get knocked out first. I was still there in the mixer till the end, ish. Um, yeah, I, I think I've, I learned, I've learned a lot today, so my poker days is, is, you know, could still be there. Fold a big hand. Yeah, but it had nothing going in, like, but it was bigger than nines. No, nothing <laughs> going in. <no>. Ice queen. <laughs> I like that because that's what you call, that is actually is what Ace King is, it's nothing, it's no pair. But, um, funny anyway. What do you make of it three ways? With the players left now, Brennan Chip leader, you know, if McCauley had won that big pot with the Ace King, I might have gambled with it, Jesse, he could have been up and in the chip lead and taken O'Reilly out at the same time, but it's going to be very interesting. So three left now, they're in the money. Um, and as you were saying about Roland DeWolf's theory, which I, I agree with wholeheartedly, uh, it's time to go for the win. Um, even because of the implied odds that there's a bigger jump from second to first than third to second. 
Well, they're all in the money now, and the title's what counts. The jumps are significant, but winning things like this gets you in the magazines, gets you on TV again. It's important to win things like this if you want to progress your career in poker. We've got two good internet qualifiers, and we've got an ex-world boxing champion, so it's going to be a real tussle to the end. Raise to 600. Raise 600 total. And Brandon is now looking into a stack that can hurt him. Um, really interesting to see what Scott O'Reilly's intentions are from this point forward. But you know what? Yes. Don't change what you're doing, as you said, until they give you a reason. And Brandon picking up the pace. He's not looking at his cards. Um, this guy's playing poker. <clears throat> it's not easy to stick that money in. Come on, Davey boy. I'll call. call. You're not going to win this by calling on the button here, Davey. These boys are going to eat you alive. Jason's aggressive. Scott can play. You've got to start taking the lead. Pass. It's uh, Piranha and his little brother in the pond. Or perhaps Piranha and the whale. Check. Jaws. Old finger without teeth. It's funny how the game's actually gone a little bit passive, but it feels like it's stepped up a little, doesn't it? Well, you've just said that, and now we've got here Davy Boy betting King High with, you know, no pair, no draw, and a flop of 963. He mentioned he was very self critical of himself after his heat which is always a good sign in a poker player, trying to, to learn how it could be better. Yeah. And he kind of was admonishing himself that he should have bet more with nothing in certain situations. There's the Royal Troon. Thrown for victory. How are the dynamics different between Jason and Scott. I think Scott now realizes he's going to be a hard man to try and raise through and steal oh. his big blind. But at the same time, he saw Jason showdown 10 4. He might try and come after him a bit. Now, Brennan's limped here. Cool. Um, Check. Check. You know, a lot of people would have, you know, there's a, obviously Scott's capable of making a squeeze. And he obviously thinks Brennan is capable of trapping. Or is there something else to it? Brennan is capable of trapping, but he's been raising a lot of hands. I think David Boyd McCauley might like this flop. I'm not sure. Check. Check it. Check. Check. <laughs> you gotta like that. You gotta like that. You've got a very aggressive player on the button who shows that he can bet with no hand. There's 600 in the middle. 200. He's done it well here, David Boy, hasn't he? Well, he's just going to call. I mean, it's the driest, safest board in the world. No straight draw, no flush draw. You flop basically the nuts. It's the first time Davy Boy McCauley has checked uh, when he's met. You know, it, he's been betting his hands for value. He might check raise. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Well, for the moment it is, yeah. It's quite transparent in some ways, but... Uh, <laughs> Brennan, ha Brennan has to switch off, really. Could it be a three? Check. Well, it, it can be a three, it can be a side. There are some hands that can check call here. I think Jason's quite a stubborn guy. When he gets into a pot, he does like to think he can bully people out of them. He's pretending to look at his chips. He must Check. be thinking. Yeah, he was thinking. He might have been... He might have been checking out Macaulay out of the corner of his eye. A perfect card for Davy Boy. Davy Boy's checked again. Now he's wow. going to bet this 10 for value, thinking that wow. Davy Boy Macaulay's got a three, and he's going to get check raised here, Jesse. This is highly oh, sophisticated. Cool. Call 400. Pass yeah. uh, base. 10. He's just called. I actually made a mistake here. I made a big mistake. Nice pot for Macaulay, taking him into second position. Um, 
Is Brennan going to change his game plan here? I don't think he should change his game plan. He's lost the odd pot here and there. He was up to over 7,000, so maybe he might just want to start playing a bit more cautiously. But the blinds are going to be going up pretty soon, and, uh, you know, there can't be any hanging about. Jason Brennan has looked like he's played the best poker tonight. But I think Scott O'Reilly will feel like he's the best poker player. Wow, if Scott O'Reilly all of a sudden gets hit with the deck, this could be ugly. And it, we're going to get to see if Jason Brennan can stand yeah, the onslaught. Cool. Yep. This feels like a, does this feel like a squeeze situation to you? Dave McCauley should be getting rid of these kind of hands out of position. And Jason very wisely folds. Dave McCauley can't be calling off this much of his stack with Queen Jack. It's, it looks pretty. It's a cash game hand. It's a deep stack tournament hand at this part of the game. He can put it all in, but calling here is just a bit miserable. But now, O'Reilly doesn't know that. And he'll be wary of trying to bluff Dave McCauley off a hand that he cannot pass. Won't he? Might he just check this down? Or uh, you know I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, he might be tempted to check it down. This is a very coordinated board. If the guy's calling with Queen Jack, why doesn't he call with seven, eight, six, seven, nine, ten? All of these kind of cards. It's a very coordinated okay. midland board. Check. <laughs> All in. I blew that out of the water. I think <laughs> O'Reilly's trying to get Macaulay off some hands that beat him. No, Pocket fours, possibly these kind of hands. I mean, at the end of the day, he also, he's not sure what David Boy McCauley's got. And, he, and if he's not sure, he just thinks bet, betting's better than checking. He doesn't want to get bluffed off his hand on the turn. If he checks behind, his hand looks very much like what it is, an ace high type hand. If Dave McCauley now oh bets the turn, Jesse, he's going to have a really tough decision himself. Made that decision quick, O'Reilly. <laughs> it was a big, oh, big pot. Raised to 900 total. Three times the bet. Scott's actually been very standard with that raise size. I wonder if it's too much. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. How beautiful is that? Two red queens. Someone's raised. He's never folding here, Dave McCauley. Never folding. Is he going all in? Is there any argument for not going all in? Um, not really. The standard play here is to go all in. I don't know why he would get fancy and just call and all in. Yeah, all in. he's done the right thing. Now Scott's going to want to count. Interestingly enough, after the chips are collected, wow. There's information, plenty of information available to Jason Brennan. A raise and a re-raise all in from Davey Boy McCauley. That was not tough. It's a lot tougher for Scott O'Reilly. Yeah, I mean, Jason didn't really have that much of a decision with two sixes. If he's got two nines, then he's got more of a decision. But going back to Scott O'Reilly, <coughs> he's going to do the maths here and find out that he's getting basically two to one. When your opponent has ten big blinds and you raise and they shove, you'll be getting two to one on the remaining money to call as a rule of thumb. So we can see on the screen, 4,000 pot total. Scott O'Reilly's got to call 1,900, pretty much exactly two to one. He only needs 33% equity to make the straight maths call. Um, with King Jack, you've got it a lot of times, don't you? You have something good. The you have a pass. Best scenario, worst scenario here for O'Reilly is that if he folds, he's basically got, oh, what's he got, about 47, 4,500. If he calls and loses, he'll be down to about 2,500. Cool. Cool. Okay, no, no. Not much. But these things happen. These things happen. Oh, yeah. uh, the real key to this hand, Jesse, is the fact that Macaulay had exactly 3,000 in chips, laying 2 to 1 for Scott. If he'd had more than that and Scott wasn't getting 2 to 1, he could have made a much stronger argument for, uh, for folding. Well, Dave Macaulay's all in but leading, bar the king. And keep it off the crossbar, says Macaulay. 
keep it out the ring altogether. A lot of chips in this pot. A lot of chips in this pot. Clubs don't matter. Just the three cowboys in the army. And he'll hold his hands high. Oh, clubs have those, uh, Dave McCauley, the double up. A much needed double up. Now that this game's changed, we've got our professional poker player, Scott Aroli, bound to 2,800 in chips. And our new chip leader, Davey Boy McCauley, with 5,900, Jesse. Yeah, massive, isn't it? And you know what? Davey McCauley, this is how he can win. This is how he's going to win. Experience. It's all going right. What do you think Davey Boy is going to do with the chip lead? I think he's just going to wait for hands, unfortunately. He did play a lot better in his heat heads up. He did play the pressure heads up when he, uh, all in. When he got heads up with his opponent. Cool. Cool. And the quick call, yeah, now that doesn't mean that Jason Brennan hasn't done the right thing. Um, it just means that mathematically he's walked into about 15% of, uh, well, even less than that on this occasion. But he's not dominated. He's going to win, you know, two to one. And uh, and he's got chips back, Jason Brennan. He's got about 3,000 back. But for O'Reilly, leading. <coughs> Unfortunately for O'Reilly, this is the destiny. That's horrible, this is the destiny for Jason. He said this at the beginning. This 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 tournament was his destiny. It's just six out to the river. O'Reilly, he was the chip leader. It was bam, it's ma'am. Destiny's Destiny's done. Destiny's child. Destiny's child. Unlucky Scott. He did what he had to do. Called all in with Ace Queen with less than 10 big blinds and couldn't outdraw the Doyle Brunson 10 do suited, Jesse. <laughs> Today was a different field entirely. Like, there was obviously a lot more um, play at the table than my first, first heat. Um, but I have to say that Jason's got rather lucky with a couple of hands, which, well, got rather lucky right off the bat, sort of thing, and he's just not stopped from there. So. With cards like that, I'm sure he might go on to win today. And we are heads up for this Sports Stars Challenge. One internet qualifier, one sports legend. It's going to be amazing. This tournament has brought together a mix of sporting legends and internet qualifiers. And how perfect is this? The final two is one of each. The champion, the world champion, Davey Boy McCauley. He hasn't played that much poker, but you haven't seen it the way he's performed throughout this tournament. And the challenger from North London, James Brennan, who has looked every inch a man who looks and wants to hoist that crown, Nick. Absolutely, he looks focused. Uh, when you look at the stats in this final table, Brennan leads in many of them. Yeah, Jason's the chip leader. He's got 8,100 in chips. Look at that bet frequency, 44%, and he's won nearly, you know, seven more hands, eight more hands than uh, McCauley. He's in, he's in command. Lines, two and 400. And from Davy Boy's point of view, um, right. what is his best 800 total. strategy? Is it total. to make the pots big and gamble? Is it to keep the patience up and hope to hit a big cool. flop? I think it's to gamble. I mean, I think if he's got like an edge, a small edge, he should just go and run with it. Now, they've both missed, but, you know, Davy Boy's got a gut All shot right. as well. <laughs> He's looking a bit interested, Davy Boy. He's Check. got a straight draw. Check. I think if he checks, we're going to see a bet of about 1,200 coming in here. He's been very consistent. Jason Brennan firing out after raising before the flop. It's if this goes to the turn where it's going to start to get really interesting. 
Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good size bet. Is it too small? He's gotten oh. a call. This wow. pot's big. This pot's huge. I would have preferred to have seen an all-in from Davy Boy McCauley there. But he can still make life very tricky. If it goes check-check on the turn and McCauley bluffs the river, he might win this pot if Brennan doesn't hit. That's a club. Check. It's the nut flush draw. I think he might just go all in now. I mean, you could. I'm all in. I was going to say, in. you could understand a check and you could understand an all in. <sighs> any other bet was going to feel quite odd, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, with, with his hand, any bet he makes commits him to the pot. He wants as much fold equity as possible. He's not sure that he's winning. He's now put the pressure on. He's got to think an ace is good. He's got to think a club's good. They both are. I don't mind this bet from Jason at all. As it turns out, Jason Brennan is ahead. He won't know that for sure until Davy Boy McCauley folds. And he's won the pot. If, if Davy Boy McCauley calls, Brennan wins on most cards. I don't see how Davy can call here. It's for all his chips. He's only really got a gut shot. He might think his ace is life, but he just doesn't have enough outs and he's folded. First big pot of the heads up goes the way of Jason Brennan. It's gone the way of aggression. And now where it was fairly level, he is nearly at 10K. He's got over a two to one chip lead. 200 pace. Davy boy fighting from behind. Here's a good hand for him. I think if Jason sees a good hand, he'll gamble with him. He can afford to gamble with him, Jesse. Looks like he's considering the raise. Like to see him do it. Get 100. Raise. It's a min raise. And Brennan. 800. Not interested. Uh oh. He hasn't actually cool. had a look yet. Oh. Cool. Suited connectors. Suited three gapper. I mean, hmm. let's see. If a 10 comes, we know what's going to happen, Jesse. Be interesting to see if Jason Brennan thinks he can find some ways to win this with the worst hand. Okay. I mean, Hold on. oh, Hold on. lovely stuff. That's really, really <laughs> lovely stuff. Well, it's not a bad flop for Ace 10. Any bet again commits him. 5 5 3. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> A little bit of stress on that one. <laughs> I think you did the right thing there. You had a senior I was beaten. It's fun here, isn't it? I had nothing That's coming more often. Yeah. <laughs> you get a laugh and everybody tells the truth. <clears throat> Be fine for 400, please. <clears throat> please. Button in the small blind. The young upstart from North London. This is a raising hand. They've been raising it to 800. Small raises because the stack sizes are quite small. So we'll see another 800 raise here. Raise to 1,000 total. Oh, he's made it to 800 Six more. To Six more. If he can pull the trigger here. Now, it's not the guy he called with the ace five last time. I mean, which makes me think he's going to call with this again. He's not going to fold it. He knows an ace heads up's pretty strong, but you know it doesn't play that well out of position in a raised pot. And I'd rather see him just take his chances and go all in. He's probably the weaker player of the two heads up, and uh, that means he should gamble cool. a bit more. Cool. What's he going to do when he misses, Jesse? He's going to pray. And it's not a bad idea to get your prayers in now, Davy Boy McCauley. Funk the ace. Because Jason Brennan looks to be betting all flops. And I think he'll be betting this one again. Again, we see a situation okay. where just having the lead pre-flop. I mean, he's checked behind some top pairs. I, I, I think he wants the chips in the middle. The board's straightening, the board's flushing. Yeah, he's, he's, gonna, he's starting to turn the hammer down, isn't it? It's not the right time to be slow playing, is it? 800. Is Davey Boy going to get stubborn and do something silly, like come over the top? He's thinking about it. He's, 
clenched his teeth. He's starting to well, feel... Cool. Well, he's feeling a little bit bullied. And, um... This pot's big. Macaulay drawing very weakly to the ace. But you know what? There's three of them in the deck. And now he picks up his gut shot again. Check. Interestingly check. enough. Check. But you know and I know that... It went check, check. Oh, it went check, check. What's the what's the thinking? I mean, this pot's too big to go check, check. Does Brennan actually... Is he worried he's behind? I don't think he's worried he's behind. I think he might be setting a trap for Davy check. Boy here. Check. He'll just bet the river now. He's going to bet something like a thousand. <clears throat> what is he trying to get caught with? That nine made a straight. That queens, worst kings, some medium pairs like sixes maybe might curiously call. I mean, Davey's calling with ace high, so there's a lot of worse hands that can call. I think it's a mandatory bet. I think you'll bet about a 1,000. 1,000. Well, Jason, Brennan agrees with you. Tell you what, he's not really oh. sure. Oh. He's not, wasn't really sure, was he? Jason Brennan. And uh, when and this hand gets turned over. And Davey yeah. Boy calls and mucks very quickly. I think he's a bit disgusted with that call. He took a, a real opinion there, Davey Boy McCauley, didn't he? That maybe he was trying, yeah, he's, he's kicking himself a little bit. But he wanted to see. Thought he was getting pushed around. He definitely thought he was getting pushed around in the previous hand oh, with yeah, Ace Jack. There was a bluff. And Ace Five. He thought it was a bluff. You know, there was there was a line of reasoning there. It, it looked like he could kind of polarize Jason Brennan's range, if you know what I mean. Well, this is an all-in <coughs> hand. Don't call Davey here. Don't limp in for the 200. Just put the chips in. Singapore sling it. He hit 100. Raise to 800 total. Ironically, I'm all in. Oh. We raise all in. Seen. And a call. And a yeah. call. And we've got a double up potential for Davy Boy McCauley, although he is behind. Um, and a chance for Jason Brennan to take the title. A 60 40 shot, the odds are here. Jason Brennan has a chance to win it. He made the right play with the ace three. Davey made the right play with the King Tenor Clubs. No it's pressure. in the lap of the poker gods now, Jesse. He's smiling, but he don't want to celebrate too early. There's still six outs. There's a backdoor draw. Though that ace looms large. It's been a dream for Jason Brennan since he won this seat on the internet. Get to this river car. Nice. And take it all. Yeah. And he's it. done it. And he's done it. Well, well. Thanks, Dave. It's been a yes. pleasure. You too. And, Cheers. you know, this was a high quality final table, Nick Rousseau. <laughs> and the best man won. He came through his first heat, and now he's won the <sighs> final. Well done, Jason Brennan. And a very, very worthy runner up, Davey Boy McCauley. Fantastic tournament. Great result. And the money to the man. That last hand, pretty nice heads up cards for both players, Nick. Uh, the stacks were short enough that they had to go in pre flop. And they went in and it just bricked off. That's what you want to see when you play ace three versus king ten. You're not that far ahead. And that was a beautiful flop turn and river. And Jason's our champion. At all stages, he seemed a man with a plan. And now he's our champion. Jason Brennan, congratulations. Thank you. Tell me how much this means to you. It means everything to me. I never thought I'd ever be sitting at this table. Not only have I got here and had such a great week with all these sports stars, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience, but to sit here and to be able to call myself a sports stars challenge champion and hold that trophy, I could only dream that. I did dream it and I made it happen with my, it just, I don't know. It just, no matter what I went in with, I knew I was gonna hit it.
Davey McCauley, c commiserations, but you showed through every stage of this tournament you had stamina and patience, and uh, you really fought there. Yeah, this is only my second time playing Texas Hold'em. Uh, the first time was, I think, two years ago here, and I got put out in the first round, uh, and I got put out in the final in this, in this in instance also. But I lost my first two world title fights, and I won the world title on my third attempt, so I think maybe next year, <laughs> maybe next year, next year will be my year. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll be back and uh, next year I'll be stronger and better than, 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 than what I was this year. It's a great performance, Davey. Now, Jason, 20,000 pounds. Other winners have used this as a springboard. You seem to have got the talent. Are you excited about the future? I'm, I don't know what the future holds. I never look too far ahead of myself. I just come play, see what happens. But... Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm just like, I'm, I'm a bit numbed. Well, he felt it. He went for it. He got there in the end. Congratulations to Jason Brennan, the champion of the Party Poker Sports Stars Challenge 4.